بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم وتب علينا أنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحانك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر وأنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل التفرق بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا شقيا ولا محروما in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. He who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, new Year, Better Me. This is the title that I was asked to deal with. As they say, everyone has his own way how to deliver his message. So, I want to take you with a very quick, small journey. Real story happened with me about 12 years ago in Hong Kong. After that, I will delve into inside the topic. 12 years ago, I was invited to Hong Kong and I went with my whole family to give like a very intensive, full, long uh, course as an introduction uh, of Islam in Hong Kong for a full month. So, one of the beautiful incidents that happened with me and really it, it was drilled in my psyche and it affected me a lot. The fact that one of the courses that I was teaching at that time, it was for the, let's say, youth, between 13 to 17. About 20 of them, nearly on a daily basis, for a full month, I was, you know, giving a class for them. Now, their background, Islamic background, either from Pakistan or Chinese, because it's Hong Kong. <laughs> so the majority of Muslims, either from Chinese origins or Pakistani origins. Some other, this is the big two majorities. But one of them just, this students, his age was around 13, more or less, and he was a Muslim just exactly three months before my coming. So he reverted to Islam 120 days before the beginning of my course. So his Islamic age is just three months. And his age is around 13. 13, 12 and a half, I forgot exactly. It's between this and that. And I knew that he was reading about Islam for about a year. Then he decided to convert to Islam. Around the age of 12 and a half, approaching 13. When I saw him, his Islamic age was just three months. Now, so one of the beautiful, amazing things that used to happen with me, his name is Abdullah. His Islamic name is Abdullah. Whenever I was asking a question about normal, classical information, because it was for, you know, more or less kids and adults, the class, apart from the, you know, the, the adults, but youth. So sometimes, let's say I want to explain something had to do with this era, something I want to speak about, the early beginning of Islam, or I want to highlight a concept, a simple concept, whatever it is. So sometimes you start with the introduction, who knows what is the name of the first wife of Prophet Muhammad SAW. This is very classical things. Most of the time, the one who used to know the correct information was this new revert. <laughs> All of them, they were born Muslims. He read about one year about Islam, then he became a Muslim just three months before I started. So it was very notable, actually. Very notable. The fact that he was answered. So I like this in him. Anyway, till the day, the time of the, 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 uh, the focal point of the story happened. One of the days I was so tired. Uh, sisters, if you can, please, يعني, do sadaqa for me. If you have kids. Who is making any noise? If you can take them out of the hall, I will be more than grateful. Because really, I lose my concentration if any kid is running or making any noise. Please, Jazakallah. Thank you very much. So, one of the days, it was very hot, 
very difficult for me and have a big family with me. We are seven, taking care of them on a daily basis. I have lectures for adults, for youth, Muslims, non-Muslims, big events, conferences, courses on a daily basis. So it was really hot. So I lost the Fajr prayer. So for me, it was a disaster. Because since I started to practice Islam, I'm 55 now, I started practicing Islam, I mean, to, com to commit myself exactly 40 years ago. Uh, exactly in 1982. But at that time, when this story happened with me, I, I was 43. So it was about, more or less, about 30 years the criterion that I used to use to know whether my relation with Allah has a problem, it was the Fajr prayer at the Masjid. Because when I started practicing Islam, because I was not practicing Islam for that, I did not care with Fajr prayer, I did not care with Asian prayer, I did not care with respecting my prayer, I did not care. So when I started to fix everything in my life with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the priority should be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the things that I fixed and I used them like a criterion, you know, to know am I on the right track or have some kind of troubles, it was praying Fajr at the masjid. If not, praying Fajr Jama'ah at home. If not, praying Jama'ah on time. Sorry, Fajr on time. If not, there's a big, big, big problem for me. This is my personal decision to know to what level I'm losing, or I'm leaking, or I'm far, or I'm on stray, I'm outside, whatever it is. <coughs> so, <coughs> so at that one of the nights I lost the Fajr prayer. So the only, the only let's say beings who knew that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, my wife and myself. <laughs> That's it. So I went to the class in a very very difficult psychological mood. It was really very difficult for me because can you traveling 10,000 miles, taking my family, speaking about Islam for non-Muslims or Muslims and I myself am not praying the Fajr. So it's not easy, you know, when you, when you lose something really very big, uh, you can't preach to people if you are doing something against. So anyway, my psychological speaking, I was in a very, very, very difficult mood. I went to the class. Before I start, this new Chinese young boy who converted to Islam just three months ago came to me. Before I start, I said, Dr. Amjad, I said this. He said, I want to ask you a question. I said, please, come on. He said, today I lost the Fajr prayer. You know Warta? I'm in a big trouble now. He came to ask me, about the thing, the only thing that I can't preach now. I can't say, you know, look, you have to, you know, you know, I myself in a very difficult situation. And I, you know, it's just a secret. I feel very bad. <laughs> you know, can you imagine yourself leaving home, screaming in the face of your mother, and outside someone stopped you, Sheikh, please help me. How can I respect my parents? <laughs> you can't speak, no power. No honesty, no genuine attitude. It's very difficult. So I, you know, yet, yet, I thought he was asking me from fiqh point of view, which means, okay, when someone lose the fajr, is it okay if he prayed the fajr after? Because I know from my experience, some people, they have a very big mistake, mistake information, that if you lost the fajr prayer, khalas, you shall not pray it. Because you lost the fortune, which is a big mistake. This is not true. You have to pray it. Whenever you wake up, you have. Anyway, I thought for the very beginning, this is his question. He was asking, I lost the Fajr prayer. Is it okay to pray it whenever? I said, yes, yes, you can pray it. He said, this is not what I'm asking about. I said, Abdullah, you just pray it and that's it. I want to close the fire. I want to discuss. I don't want to open the fire. I just want to very quickly, close it and that's it. I said, pray it, no problem. I said, this is not my question. I said, okay, what is your question? Focus now. He said, I feel shy from Allah. Can you imagine my, my situation? Wallahi, qasaman billah, I can't explain to you the feeling 
what happened with me at that time. At that time, I was 43. My practicing age, of my, or my age of practicing Islam, it was 30 years. At that time, I was a PhD holder of Islamic studies and Islamic faith for 12 years at the university. <laughs> I just can't remember how it took me in my life to develop a relation with Allah to feel shy when I lose the Fajr prayer. <laughs> I can't remember. So I was shocked. I literally, I was shocked. Three months his age, he was able to develop an understanding and a relation. When he loses the Fajr, he feels shy. Okay, pause now. This is not my topic, by the way. I started my lecture with <laughs> now, why I started my lecture with this story? Keep it in your mind. Put it on the shelf. Keep it in your mind. Abdullah, three months old in Islam. His age is around just 13. He came from atheist background. His two parents are atheists. He became a Muslim through reading in the internet for a full year at the age of 12 and a half or 12. He decided to become a Muslim by his own around the age of 13. Can you imagine his context, circumstances, situation? Yet in three months, he was able to reach to a level to develop an amazing, beautiful relation with Allah to feel shy when losing the Fajr prayer. In my words now, I said, he realized the true values of the things and he made his own priorities in his life correctly. Now, put his story, let's go to our topic. Because I want to use Abdullah's story now in a few minutes. What is the topic for us today? New Year Better Me. So I have two concepts now. A new year means time is passing. <laughs> True or false? You are talking about time. Year is a time. Hijri year, Gregorian year, time is passing. So the first concept that we are discussing the passing of the time. This is a big concept now. Second concept, better me. Better compared with what? Because better indicates by default that there's something worse, something good, something better. Compared with what? And on what base? <laughs> yeah, for example, which is better, iPhone or Android mobiles? Which is better? The question should be, tell me on what base, what is the criteria, better in what, which is better in the price, definitely all the Androids are better, which is better in security, iPhone, which is better in camera, Huawei, which is better in banking system, iPhone, which is better in the XYZ, and now we have differences. So, if someone came to me and said, look, I am a director, movie film, for example, and I want the best camera. Two years ago, I would recommend to him the Huawei, <laughs> not the iPhone. Someone came to me and said, I'm a businessman, and I have about 10 banking accounts in five different countries. If someone hacked an account for me, I'm lost. So what is better for him? Definitely, iPhone. The most secure one. So, what is the base that you are comparing? So, better me. Better me compared with what? So, for example, I was not playing football very well. I became the best football player. For example, 
I did not have any house. Now I'm much more better. I have two houses. For example, I did not have a good health. I have now a good health. No. As Muslims, we have priorities. Depending on these two concepts and the passing of the time, we need to know the following. We are believers. We have our own perspective for our existence. We are not living just for the sake of that class. We do exist and yalla, let's enjoy life. This is completely against our faith. We don't have something, something such as let's enjoy our life. Wait, enjoy in a halal way. Ya yeah, Sheikh, please, yani, uh, 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 time is passing and death is coming. Ya yeah, Sheikh, please be a little bit optimistic. Yani, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not restricting, I'm just telling. The biggest factor on life is death. Even non-believers, they can't reject the existence of death. By the way, do you know the power of the reality of death is much more power than the reality of the existence of Allah? Many people, they reject, they reject Allah's existence, yet no one of them can say, no, 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 death does not exist. For us, if time is passing, means death could come at any moment. So therefore, when I want to discuss better me, because in new year, I can't avoid bringing to my mind better in what capacity compared with what, and for the sake of what, depending on what. In light of these things, let's come how I advise myself and my respected brothers and sisters as believers, alhamdulillah. And we say believers, we don't believe generally in anything, just no, no, no. We believe in Islam. And Islam is the last version of Allah's law and Allah's constitution for humanity starting from Adam up to Muhammad sallallahu We have our own vision. So when we want to decide what to do, how to be better, why to be better, it should be depending on our vision. We, but what is our vision? It's a reminder. I'm doing just a reminder for myself, my respected brothers and sisters. But what is my vision? Rukya, and how do I see the, my existence. Now, one of the good ways to understand what do we mean by our vision, in a simple way, go to what we call the most important questions that many people on earth, they have no answer for. And it's called the big questions of existence. Al-As'il al-Wujudiyya al-Kubra. Man ana? Limada ana huna? Man awjadani? Man matloob minni? ماذا سيجري معي؟ إلى أين سأذهب؟ ولماذا؟ Who am I? Why am I here? Who caused me to exist? What's supposed for me to do? What will happen to me when I leave? Why? And why? What will happen X, Y, Z? Okay, depending on what? This is called the big questions of existence. Many people on earth, they have no answers. Or for many reasons, they are misled in these questions. Alhamdulillah. We are the only group who has the full, clear vision, answer, coherence, consistency, clarity, full understanding, no contradiction, goes in parallel. Every single point goes in parallel with other point without any problem, we have the answer. Who am I? I'm part of the creation. Who created me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Very indeed. I've not created the jinn and the human being except to worship me. What's the meaning of worship? Full obedience without any kind of preconditions. We are not talking about ritual worship. Does not mean I have not created the jinn and the ants just to pray, which means to do the umrah and the hajj and the come to. No, no, this is simple part of worship. Definition, definition of worship. Full obedience without any kind of preconditions for anything or any group or any person is called in Arabic 
language ibadah. That's why Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said in the hadith, Ta'is abdu dinar. Wow, I'm to thee. Wow, to the person who's worshipping the dinar or the dollar. Have you seen ever in your life a person who's putting a dinar or a real or a dollar and is prostrating, doing a literal sujood for the dinar? No. What's the meaning of worshipping the dinar? Full obedience. If the money, which means he's worshipping the money. How someone could be worshipping the money? The money is his goal regardless of any restrictions. Full obedience. I want the money, but the money could come through halal and haram. I don't care. Bad, good, nice way, I don't care. Drugs, I don't care. Human trafficking, I don't care. Alcohol, I don't care. Cheating, I don't care. Gambling, I don't care. By this, practically, I'm a worshipper of money. This is the meaning of Ta'is Abd al dinar So I'm answering the question. Why I'm here? وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا when Allah says, I've not created you, but to worship me means to obey me in anything I ask you to do. Like, what else? Big questions. He is the one who created life and death to put you into trial, to test you. We are on a big test. But say, Sheikh, why, why, why? Just know the information. We are on a big test. We are asked to obey. If you believe, you need to know. This is part of your vision. If you are a believer, this is basic part of your faith. But what will happen next? We believe in four phases in life. Phase number one, our souls are created. Phase number two, our souls are injected in the wombs of our mothers up to death. This is phase two, which is called in our language, Hayat dunya Worldly life, phase two. Phase three, al barzakh. Al nar yu'raduna alayha hudubu wa ashiya wa yawm taqubu al-sha'a adkhilu ala fir'awna ashadd al-adab. And the other ayah, wa min wara'ihim barzakhun ila yawmi yub'athun. Barzakh literally in Arabic means the barrier between two things. Barzakh is the third phase of life where souls are kept after death, what we know, death. For us, death is not the end. Death is just a transmission, okay? Transferring of your soul, your memory, your feelings, but not the body, from phase number two, which is world life, into phase number two, which is the Barzakh. We, we know it as Na'im al-Qabr and Adam al-Qabr. The pleasure of the grave and the punishment of the grave. This is phase three. Phase four starts with the day of judgment. It would be commenced with the day of judgment and it will be ended with the full hereafter, you know, endless. Containing the accountability, al ard being exposed, full accountability, and Jannatun. I ask Allah to let every one of us to be from the people of the Jannah. Now, this is part of our vision. No Muslim is a Muslim. No believer is a good, logical believer if he does not know that or does not accept that. Or otherwise, you are just waiting your time. This is part of my faith and your faith. So when I want to discuss better me or a new year, if I do not plan, and by the way, let's use, let's use the business language. When you want to put a business plan, depending on a business model, you build this depending on what? Depending on the actual reality of the market. <laughs> the actual reality for us that we are creating. The actual reality, there is an end. The actual reality, there is accountability. The actual reality, the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, told us, I gave you a catalog constitution under the name of Quran, it's explained under the name of Sunnah, and it's explained under the name of Islamic jurisprudence, Fiqh. Follow the guidelines, this will save you through your test up to the point when you meet me. You will meet me. Period. The story is finished. <laughs> Once we are there, and man mata qamat qiyamatun, anyone who left phase two 
through the gate of death, practically this person, his own qiyamat has already started. <laughs> because he started the first stage of Al-Akhirah. Barzakh actually is like the backyard of the Akhirah. <laughs> Barzakh, which is Na'im al-Qabr or Adab al-Qabr. Now, this is our vision. Who am I? This is it. What I'm asked to do? Obedience. I'm in a test. I will die. After that, we have resurrection and congregation. Back on sure, full accountability. In the accountability, it's an amazing. It's part of our faith. By the way, I'm not analyzing. I'm not concluding. I'm just highlighting facts. I'm just, just bringing facts, which is part of our faith. Alhamdulillah, I'm not addressing them believers now. I'm, be, I'm addressing Muslim believers. So therefore, I'm doing just a reminder and fixing some possible misconceptions. So what's the title? Better me in New Year. Depending on that, the concept of better should be on the base of what? <laughs> now, enjoy your life in Mubah Halal things, no problem. But... As long as time is passing, and at any moment I might leave this world alive, and once I leave this life, I will start immediately the accountability. Because by the way, Barzakh, which is known for us as Naim, pleasure, the cover, or Adab, punishment of the cover, basically is the first stage of being rewarded, not the full. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah mentioned Na'im al-Qabr and Adab al-Qabr, both in the Quran. Na'im al-Qabr, one of the, one of the indications about Na'im al-Qabr in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَدُونَ According to the Fassirin, this ayah is talking about by the time I am about to leave this life, which is called al ghargara okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the good practicing believer, will send not the angel of death just, not just the one who's in charge of taking my soul. He will be accompanied with a numerous number. We don't know because the text says, Tatanazzal. Tatanazzal indicates big numbers and groups after groups, groups after groups, which could be hundreds, thousands, we don't know. But what is the main aim for those? They will be, when I just realized that I started the Akhirah or seeing the angel of death, welcoming me to the world of Akhirah. It's like, Can you imagine? When you are welcomed by a great king in another country and you are an honored guest, when you leave the airplane, what do they put for you outside? Red carpet with guards, security guards with the beautiful uniform that they have. What do we call this? Honoring you. They are honoring you with their security guards, Red carpets, special delegation, we do this human beings. There is a divine will coming for us which cannot be compared with ours. Because Allah says, Inna I'm talking about stage three now. Our point, time passing, death is coming, I want to be better. Better in what? <laughs> better in what entitles me to be welcome with these groups of people. <laughs> Or the, the angels. Allah SWT says, in the Ladina, this is the condition now. Now I will give you an example about the criteria of better. Better in what? Better in sports? Better in health? Better in money? No. Better in my relation with Allah. Better in my status according to what Allah loves and Allah wants. Because Allah SWT made it clear. Those who said, declared that Allah is our Lord, 
and they kept themselves on the straight path. Very clear. I'm not concluding. I'm just telling the fact. The text is direct and clear. Qalu indicates what? They are proud of their religion. They are not shy. Qalu. Not just. And here comes. If you want to be better me, don't ever allow yourself to feel shy because you are a Muslim. If you feel shy that you are a Muslim, you are not better of yourself. Actually, you are disgrading the ni'mah, the blessing that Allah has given you. You should be the most, the most proud person, okay, in a good sense. You need to feel that you are gifted. You are gifted, by the way, by the way, by the way. We are the chosen people. But the beauty of our way of understanding chosen people, that anyone can be chosen by his choice. Yani. Once you decide to say, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, Muhammad is his messenger, immediately you will have the visa, nationality, passport of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be from the chosen. <laughs> you are not, while for example, in the dunya, if you want to be an American, if you just love America, immediately you will become an American? No. If you love Canada, you are an immigrant. Just when you say, I love I bear witness that Canada is the best country. By default, you become a Canadian? No. Yeah, I mean, you will wait for years and years, and you have to fulfill tens and hundreds of conditions, and you have to prove such and such and such. Allah. This is the beauty of Islam. So, I'm talking about the third phase, which is Naim al Qabr. They will be welcome. The condition, Qalu, A'lanu, declare. They did not feel shy. They were so happy. It's not just a claim. So this concludes the whole idea. Better than what? قَالُوا استقاموا. طيب. The straight path. Is it up to me? Which means, you know, جماعت أظن. تعرف جماعت أظن. أنا أظن أظن إنه الله ما بيرضى عن هذا. أنا أظن إنه أنا I feel and I think إنه this is good. حبيبي. حبيب قلبي. It's not up to you. And to me, to what we think and we think and we think. Allah has decided what is right and what is wrong. <laughs> يعني يا شيخ, you know, some atheists sometimes they attack us by saying, يعني يا شيخ, this mighty God who created this big, big universe is chasing a woman if her hair is out of her hijab and he will put her in the hellfire because of this earth. Come on, what kind of God is this? Look how, how they rephrase the concept. <laughs> and we reply to him to say, Habibi, the point is not to lose some of her hair out of her hijab. The point of the attitude of respecting Allah's commandments, being rude or being submitted. Whether it's in gambling or in alcohol or respecting the parents, or whatever. The idea is not the action itself. The idea is the attitude and the intention behind it. Anyway, but just I'm giving an idea about why I said Jamaat Azun and we need to know. Qalu Staqam. We have a law. We have a constitution. We have a Quran. We have a Sunnah. If Allah commands, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ When Allah decrees, Allah decides, Allah declares something, I have no option but to say, حَضْر Just submit. This is the meaning of قَالُوا ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا In this terminology, I can understand what does it mean to be better. Why do I, I, I keep always making the joke? I, I call them Jamaat al Gilbal Abiyad. How many of you hear this terminology from me? Jamaat al Gilbal Abiyad. The people of the white heart. And this is, this is a Jordanian terminology. Jordanian, I will say the story in Arabic, then I will give the core and the spirit in English. Now, I used to face a lot of students. One of them, one of my students, female, she came to me once in Arabic. بعض الطالبات في الجامعة يجي يقول لي مرة واحدة فيهم يقول لي دكتور صحيح أنا ما بصلي وصحيح أنا مش محجبة وصحيح بحكي مع شباب أه ولكن أنا قلبي أبيض وما بكذب والله بعرف 
وتتلالا بدو قيلة سيكا على ما يمنى محكة تاسي You know, she came to me with a very strong attitude. She said, Dr. Lok, it's true that I don't wear the hijab, yes. And I have a boyfriend and I don't pray. But you need to know, I have a white heart and I do not lie and Allah knows. By the way, I took this incident which happened with me in reality like an example, a symbol to represent a category and a mentality of understanding. Many Muslims, they decide to pick and choose part of Islam, they reshape, reformat, re-whatever, their own version of Islam. For her, then I started to tell, to tell her and the people like her, I said, look, for the sake of the one who created you. Wallahi ala rasi, you know ala rasi in Arabic? On my head, yeah. I'm translating it, I'm saying it. Okay. But see, the fact that you are not lying is an excellent thing. Wallahi, mashallah, I admire you. Good, nice, jazakallah khair. And the fact that you have a white heart, you don't have envy, no hasad, no backbiting, jazakallah khair. Okay. Please, for God's sake, on what base you have decided to pick out of the law of Allah. Allah is the one who asks you not to lie, and Allah is the one who asks you to purify your heart. Good. Yes, this. Come on the ground. Time. The same Allah is the same one who asked you to wear the hijab and not to have boyfriend and to pray. On what base you decided to deal, to exclude hijab, boyfriend and prayer and to include not lying and white heart and to consider yourself a very nice Muslim Allah Ba'araf, which means as if she was telling me, hey, Sheikh, don't, don't interfere between us and Allah. Allah knows how nice we are. Okay, but your version of Islam is yours, not Allah's, and not Muhammad's, and not Islam's. <laughs> With this, this sometimes for many reasons we do have this. That's why when I say better me, better me not according to my feelings. Better me not according to what I think. No! Or otherwise, Otherwise, there is no sense for the core concept of our religion. Look, now Judaism was named after the tribe of Judah. Christianity was named after the person of Jesus Christ. Buddhism was named after the person of Buddha. Islam was not named after Muhammad, because we are not Muhammadans, no. Islam was named with the core concept of it, Islam. The translation of Islam is submission. The core root verbs that the word Islam goes in Arabic language is two radicals or two root verbs. Peace and submission, same with Islam. By submitting yourself, you will achieve the true peace. Because no peace if you do not submit to the one who controls the peace. That's why Allah said, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ عِشَةً بَنْكَ The one who decides to forsake me, to exclude me out of his life, he definitely will be facing a miserable life. This is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are just understanding the law. Depending on this way of understanding, depending on this, let's say, I will conclude the last part of my. I, what we have done now, in the context, I remember now just a very beautiful story about the better. How many of you knows Yusuf Hestis? You know Yusuf Hestis? The will die in America, from, from Texas. It's about 75 something, Zahallah. I heard this story about him when part of the discussions that happened with him before he decided to convert to Islam. He used to have like a shop, let's say more or less, contains some kind of things. Some of them, he was close to Catholicism and he was doing some, some type of da'wah through his business. I mean da'wah to Christianity. So one of the people who used to supply him with some of his needs in his job, gas station or something like that, he was an Egyptian brother. 
May Allah descend his mercy upon him because he passed away about, I think, three years ago. This Egyptian brother was a very, look, very simple, humble, non educated person. But he had very pure faith with a very simple but very powerful pillars. He used to supply the shop of Yusuf Estes, and Yusuf Estes was doing his best to do machinery against him, to convert him to Christianity. So every time he comes with whatever he used to come, he used to make money at this time and try to convert him to Christianity. Speak with him, speak with him, speak with him. The Egyptian brother, you know, completely blocked. He's not responding, but he did not have the power in English. No, no power in the language, no power in the immigrant st status, no power in the education, but he was just refusing. Then he was fed up. Now, the one who narrated the story to the best of my knowledge was Yusuf Estes himself. He said at a certain point, he wanted just to get rid of him. He said, look, if you prove to me that your religion is better than mine, I will follow your religion. I mean, the intention of that Egyptian brother, Zahra al was just to, just to close the discussion. Prove to me that it's better. With his pure niyyah. Yusuf Estes said, I felt that really I caught him. Khalas, he's, he's under my hammer now. He said, well, come, 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 come. I'll prove to you that my religion, focus now, is better than yours. He said, look, look, count with me. You pray five times. You don't pray five times. You must go to the Hajj if your conditions are applied in you. We don't have to do it. You must fast 30 days. No drink, no water. We fast just by leaving some kind of certain types of food. You must do some such, such. You must pay something. We don't. You must, we don't. We start with very pure nature. When he finished, he said, excuse me, sir. Focus now. I asked you to prove to me that your religion is better, not easier. What? He said, sir, I challenge you to prove it is better, not easier. You know, this chalk, Yusuf said, what? It was like the spark that pushed him to rethink the whole issue that he believes in. Who said that easier is better? By the way, not to study is easier, but not better. Not to go to the university is easier, but not better. Not to respect your parents is easier, but just to go white light, but not better. Not better. To drink anything is easier, but not better. <laughs> to do anything you wish at any time is easier, but not better. Everyone was disrespected. Because <laughs> you are not controlling yourself. When you drink alcohol and you have drugs, you speak any word at any time, you do any noise at any point, no one will respect you. Who said easier is better? No, 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 no. Actually, actually, we became more civilized, we became more restricted. Compare our lives now in terms of restrictions. Yeah, I mean, Islam is restrictions. Yeah, I mean, civilization is restrictions. 100 years ago, compare the restrictions in money transactions compared to today. Compare the traffic restrictions. Compare the visa, passports. Anything, anything you want to do in life. Is it now more restricted and complicated or less? Everything is more complicated now. Everything is more restricted. And we are proud that we are more civilized. So who said better is easier? So when we speak about better me, don't ever accept anyone to convince you that better is easier. <laughs> better could be and actually it is much more difficult. But it's better. If you want to be Harvard graduate, you know what you want to do? Just to be a just to be accepted to fill the application for Harvard. You know to you need to do what we call in Jordanian accent to have the And everything in your life will be upside down. And you are killing yourself literally 24-7 for four years to be accepted, nominated to apply for Harvard. SubhanAllah. So at the end, Wow, graduate, Harvard graduate. Hmm, okay, in the scale of Allah. Bye.
I personally, speak about my personal faith, I consider, I personally consider Steve Jobs is much more clever than Einstein. I personally. Steve Jobs, one of the cleverest person maybe in the last 50 years in the world. The last six years of his life, he adopted Buddhism. And he passed away as an unbeliever. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know. Sheikh! And I'm not talking about what he's doing now. I'm not discussing. I'm, I mean, we, we just judge superficially. Superficially, he declared he did, he's very clever, very rich, very powerful. Unless he was not able to use the internet. Do you think he was not able to use the internet? Steve Jobs, for example. <laughs> the one who invented Apple Macintosh and iPhone and iTunes. Huh? No access for knowledge? No. Can't understand? No. But. He did not accept what we know is the truth. But my point, my point, now you need to know, depending on the whole idea that I explained, better, this is how we decided. Depending on that, now let me just finish with the good news. Good news, I will, I will take part of my Friday khutbah today at the Dow Foundation in I, I highlighted something similar to today's topic. And I finished my talk with what I call the good news now. Let's finish with the good news. You must be better depending on this criteria. Yes, definitely. You have to be careful about the passing of the time. It's very dangerous. But be careful that You need to know these two criteria. To be proud, declare, and to restrict yourself to the law of Allah as Allah wants, not as the society wants or my parents wants, or whatever wants. By this, now the good news, that I always feel very happy to highlight them. Number one of the God news. Now, the gate of repentance is always open. To the end of the verse, which means, the gate of repentance, whatever I have done, whatever I'm still doing, once I decided to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything will be completely deleted. Good news. So don't, don't have any kind of, this kind of, uh, you know, despair or be optimist, uh, pessimistic. You have to be optimistic. Now, number two, in the good news, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will deal with you according to your intention, not necessarily your deeds. Let's imagine that you are a new practicing of Islam. For whatever reason, you were not practicing. And you had a lot of sins in your history. You decided now, you took a decision to repent to Allah, to fix all your problems. Let's imagine you are a youth, a young man, you used to be very good with your parents, which is a career, a major sin. It's a major sin. It's equal to seher, magic, killing, Drinking, it, it, it's, it's a big, major sin to disrespect your parents. Imagine you are from those, you decided to repent now. Or you used to deal with gambling, alcohol, cheating, stealing, theft, whatever. Whatever. You want to repent. Now you have obstacles. You are not able to fix the things that you have done. You, you used to be very good with your mother. Your mother, Aslan, passed away two years ago. <laughs> Now your intention. Or you decided with a pure intention to repent to Allah, you started this intention now, you left this masjid, you passed away. Don't worry. If you decided with a pure intention for the sake of Allah, you want to fix and Allah knows your intention, whatever mountains of big problems outside you could not do because of your intention, everything will be deleted and it will be in the scale of your rewards. So this is the second glad tidings which will give you the peace of mind. Don't panic. And the third one, which is the most beautiful. Allah will deal with you not according to your deeds, but according to your efforts. Because if you want to fix, let's imagine you are a parent, a father or a mother. You listen to me, I say, Jazakallah khair. You opened my eyes, really, I was falling in short. 
I did not care with my kids. I did not take care. I was not respecting my wife. I was not respecting my husband. I left, you know, my kids in the street. I, I, I want to fix. You went there. You did the best effort on earth. No one of them listened to you. Could it happen? Is it possible? You want to fix. They are not listening. You change your attitude. They did not accept from you. You did your best. Amazing effort. Results, zero. Don't worry. Your hisab is completely accomplished. Don't worry. <laughs> Allah will look to you. Intention plus efforts and attitude, not results. No accountability for the results. Some prophets at the day of judgment, according to Prophet Muhammad, will come without not even one person who has followed them. A prophet! Prophet Allah contacted him directly with revelation. He was not able to convince one person. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Some of Prophet, Prophet, will come with one, just one follower, just two followers, just two followers, no followers. And one of the biggest examples, Nuh Alayhi Salaam, which we know that he did da'wah for 950 years. We don't know his age. Maybe he left 1,300 years, <laughs> maybe 2,000. He did da'wah in his people 950 years. And we know those who followed him, plus the animals, they were in one ship. <laughs> so we are talking about tens of hundreds. Allahu Akbar, thousands, yes. Is it his, his own son did not? So this is the third glad tidings. Number one, repentance is open. Take a decision. Take a decision to repent, to fix. Your intention will cover everything if you are stopped by an external power, by the will of Allah. Number three, your efforts is very valuable, not necessarily the results. By this, by this, you can really be a better of yourself. Take in consideration, don't, don't allow shaitan to use the weapon of tasweep, which is I will. Take a decision, try fixing, depending on the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by this really, in you year, better me. Actually, every day you will be a better of your self. Are you planning to open for discussion or, uh, sorry, questions or uh, finish? Yeah, we have about, uh, about 10 minutes if anybody has a, a question. But please let the question be on, on the topic. Don't ask me about mortgage, okay? <laughs> sorry, please. <laughs> Very good question. Okay, yes, yes. Now, just to make sure, because we have people on the internet, I need to rephrase your question. The brother is asking about the ayah that I have just mentioned in the context of my speech, which is Anyone who decided to forsake or to reject okay, my way, he will have a miserable life. We can understand this in different levels. From one angle, Islamically, majority of Muslims are not applying Islam from one angle. So we are punished <laughs> from one angle. If you want to get Muslims within our Islamic house, the majority of us 
We don't have applying for the major rules of Islam from Jakarta to Panjab. We don't. We have on individuals and very simple, you know, levels. So from this angle, in the Islamic house, Allah is punishing us, which is very simple. Right. If we want to enlarge the big scale, big scale, non-Muslim, hey, how come we can give him levels of the answer? Level number one, we tell him, we have the right system, but we are bad followers, and the owner of our system is punishing us temporarily. This is a simple level, high level, which is the most important. Pause, I will take you to another example to make analogy, to make it very easy. Do you know Honda cars? Is it a good car here in Canada? Honda. Wherever you go, Honda is there. I mean, one of the most powerful and best cars. Right. Do you know that between 1939 and 1945, what happened between these six years? Second World War. Honda is a Japanese car. Do you know this? Honda is what? Japanese car. Do you know that the Western alliances, they destroyed the factory of Honda in these six years four times completely? Do you know that? Yani, I'm just telling you. Honda factory of cars that you witness now, about 70, 80 years ago, in six years, as a factory for a car, it was destroyed completely, they rebuilt it again. It was destroyed completely, rebuilt it again. Destroyed completely, rebuilt it again, four times in six years. Now, it's one of the best cars. When we speak about a system, an idea, an ideology, a full constitution, don't judge it when it's on the nation level with decades. As we do not, we do not judge persons by days or weeks or months. We judge him by years. Go to the majority of world championship in any type of sport. Two years before he became the world championship, he was suffering from tens of troubles, no muscles, no good sport, but then he became. So, we as a nation, as a Ummah, if you want to judge us, look at the 1400 years now. Ups, downs, ups, downs, ups, downs. So, now we are just in a phase of down. Look to the history, the up will come definitely, because we have the right and powerful and true system. So you can take this level, that level, third level. If, because we know the source, we know the system, it's like, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى If you and me agreed that, for example, the iPhone is the best, for example, secured iPhone in the world, is it possible that some people might have the iPhone and and for example, dropping some liquid in it or playing games with it and throwing with each other, it will not work properly. Not because the iPhone company has two bits, but I'm misusing it. The iMac is one of the best for graphic and animation and uh, something. One of the best, if not the best. No TV satellite channel can operate without having the iMac, you know, stuff. For their broadcasting they can't they can't they will pay because it is the best in their screens and in their coloring system and in their, they will have it but you can go to a satellite channel all of them drinking tea and uh, making this uh, they're destroying this does not mean the system is bad it is the best system whether i love it or not but some of us are misusing now so if you, when you talk this with this with that all together we need to believe if I, I'll give you a political example. <coughs> Compare the Vietnamese people with Arabs and Muslims. In terms of the civilization, in terms of the history, in terms of the power, Arabs and Muslims, they have a lot, a lot, a lot of things compared with people of Vietnam. People of Vietnam, you know, most of them, they were non-believers, they were atheists. They believed 
in their rights to defend their country. They were able to kick out the most powerful country on earth. True or false? Even though, according to the BBC, Americans showered Vietnam with, look to the number, according to the BBC, 26 million tons of chemical weapons, which is equal to four nuclear bombs. Yet, they were kicked out because they believed in something. So what if you believe, uh, they, sorry, they believed and practiced. <laughs> they, they, they did not sleep and cry. We have a lot of Muslims now. They want Allah like the, the big joke. Someone said, oh Allah, oh Allah, please, ya Allah, ya Allah, give me children, ya Allah, give me kids. Someone next to him said, hey, are you worried? He said, no. Allah, So what is the value of my prayer? Ya Allah, give me kids. Kids will not come with rain. <laughs> Go, work, find a wife, pay the maher, establish a house, get married, then Ya Allah, give me. <laughs> so when you put all these concepts together, definitely there is no problem. Wallahu alam. This is how I understand it. Wallahu alam. Zakallah khair. Yes, brother? Sorry? The story of Abdullah, the new convert from Hong Kong. I mean, what happened next after that? You told us that he was feeling uh, ah. off his prayer, missing the special prayer. I, I, uh, you know, I don't remember what I answered him because I was so, you know, I was shocked and it was very embarrassing for me. I did not have the power to answer. So, to be honest with you, I had some kind of like, like a hidden psychological trick I wanted to avoid discussing the idea because it was very difficult for me. But I forgot now, because 12 years ago, what did I answer him? I forgot, to be honest with you. But what was fixed in my mind, my reaction of fear when I was suffering from this and he came to me and the reason of it, it was he felt shy from Allah. This is the, the, the point. Now, uh, and subhanAllah, and up to this moment, I don't know exactly what he's doing, because now I, I think he's 25 now. <laughs> SubhanAllah. But the idea was, he was able to develop this beautiful relation and to put, uh, why I brought him as an example, Abdullah, in his age of 13, he took a decision to put priorities according to its real values. This is my point, because New Year better me. As like one of the examples I said in the Fajr, sorry, in the Jum'ah prayer today. I said, let's go and review our reality. What is, what, uh, is it a trouble, a big trouble for me when my kids lose the bus of the school compared with I don't do anything if they lose the Fajr prayer? The value. I as a mother, do I feel very angry if one of my kids broke some souvenirs or something at the house, but I don't care if my daughter leaves the house half naked, putting all kinds of perfumes and makeup, for example. I mean, what's the value? For what thing I feel angry, or I push, or I say, like in the Arab world, for example, in the Arab world, if someone, some Arab countries, if some people, the kids, if they came out from the streets, saying jokes, political jokes, about the Hakim, about the King, about the President, all of them. You know, it's untranslated. And please, 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 for the sake of Allah, they say, You know, walls have ears, which means, No one will, uh, you will not, you will have no job. You will, uh, all of them, they put all efforts to shut up his mouth, not to say a political, what, joke type. If this same young man here by his parents committing blasphemy, do they have the same effort, all of them, to shut up his mouth? Ya Ammi, Allah Ghafoor Rahim, Allahu Akbar, Shu Sar, Mu Mish Gasudha, Tabi Ammi, in Nukti, Bardu Mish Gasudha, La Yahu Istra Arda, Bimay Ayat Ayyan. You want her? Okay, here comes the amazing, amazing. Amazing standard that we decide the priorities are upside down. This is, this is my point. 
better me with a new year, one of the most important things to re-evaluate. Am I putting the right order with the right values according to submission to Allah? This is the point. Yeah. Zakallah khair wa akhirah. Zakallah khair. Karam jad barakallah fiq. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you for the hot topic. Zakallah khair. The hot way that you presented it. Zakallah khair. Barakallah fiq. Subhanakallah wa alhamdik. Shadu an la ilaha illa an. Astaghfirullah wa alaikum wa alaikum. Wa al-asr inna al-insana lafi khus. Illa ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihat. Wa tawasabu al-haqqi wa tawasabu al-salihat. Zakallah khair. Thank you.